Uh, well, Roy, I just sent uh, yes. the links again, again to three participants. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. And I think we start now not to yes. make the ones who joined us punctually to wait too long. Okay. Warm welcome. Thank you for joining this meeting. We are very glad. It's a new format. And um, I will explain a bit why and what we have in mind. Um, we are, of course, uh, very interested to know who is participating and in your views. But we have a very tight agenda and therefore we decided to shift the introduction round to the end. So we make the introduction round at the end and we ask you at the same time to give, you f to give feedback how you like this event and um, what could be of interest for you in the future because we plan to do this type of event. Um, <coughs> more frequently. Um, the uh, instruction I had already, so we can kick off. Um, the objectives of the meeting, we, we wanted a little bit to look who are our associate partners, exchange with them, learn more what they are doing, what are their interests. Also to think um, how can we better network you because amongst uh, uh, you, I think um, the, the contacts could be quite interesting. We wanted to give you a general update on Nereus. And Nereus is a very dynamic promotion and outreach platform. And there are a lot of opportunities um, for you also to promote your activities and your organization. And we want to make sure you are aware of them. We want to give you a brief uh, uh, overview on projects and initiatives we are involved in and what is their state of play. And um, we wanted to give you some inspiration, some food uh, for thought. Um, we looked for some thematic intervention and we choose this time maritime affairs. We have um, a speaker from one of our projects, um, impressive, um, Daniela Isielu from Planetech. And uh, we have from the European Space Agency, Isabel Deso, who will tell us uh, something about the study that ESA is, uh, the survey that is ESA currently conducting. On the other hand, we wanted to put the second thematic focal point on education and training. Margarita Krisaki, our project officer, is uh, presenting a bit on the eu for geo initiative, an Erasmus partner, Erasmus Plus funded partnership. And we are very glad um, to have Emmanuel with us, a representative from the university uh, partnership. Um, who are our associate partner? Um, a mix of um, uh, research organization, namely that is the largest group, followed by universities. Um, we have a, a very strong SME dimension amongst our associate partners. Um, the associations cluster in the SME, um, they, they have a very strong shape uh, uh, towards uh, uh, the, the SME segment. And we looked uh, what is the geographical di distribution of our associate partners, where are they based? It's not surprising the majority is based in Italy, but that is also because the majority of our member regions are Italian. Then the second largest group is based in France. That's mostly the most of our or a large part of our associate partners are based in the region around Toulouse in, in Occitanie. 
Um, and we have only one Portuguese region, but we have a number of Portuguese uh, uh, um, associate partners. They are, uh, a lot of them are based in the Azores, to give you an idea. Um, we wanted to provide you with an update on the Rios. What, what are the upcoming uh, uh, dates for you to save in your agenda? And what are we involved in? Um, important for you, um, please save the date. We um, will have the General Assembly 2021. Again, as a remote uh, event due to the pandemic, it will be on the 5th of May. 2021 in the morning from 10 till 12. <clears throat> the actual General Assembly is most probably not very interesting for you because it concerns mainly statutory affairs. However, in the beginning, we will have a quite interesting keynote by a representative from the European Investment Bank. Um, the Space Co Commissioner uh, Thierry Breton highlighted in the European Space Conference this year that he wants to make Europe the space hub, that he has a long list of initiatives and ideas how he wants to promote space entrepreneurship in Europe and what to do. And um, there we put for the network a focal point because in many of our regions, SMEs, young entrepreneurs, uh, startups are the protagonist. And we want to understand what are the Commission's idea to promote entrepren space entrepreneurship in, in Europe, how do they support that, and um, what does it mean for the regional level. So the keynote is quite important and quite interesting for everybody. Save the date, 5th of May 2021, 10 till 12 a.m. Then uh, we'd like to draw your attention to another online event we are planning for next month. Save the day, 24th of March. We invited uh, two presentations by the Commission, again on the vision of space entrepreneurship. When the Commissioner says he wants to make Europe the hub for space entrepreneurship, what does it mean? What is the Commission going to do concretely? And how does that impact the regional level? The second impulse talk will be on the new flagship the Commission mentioned in his intervention, um, the connectivity, uh, secure digital connections for the future. What is it? What, uh, what does it mean for the regional level and what, I have, what do we have to expect? So everybody is welcome to attend and uh, we recommend for you to register uh, as soon as possible. Then um, we would like to draw your attention on an initiative we just launched. Um, all our regions and uh, their regional stakeholder, their citizens, their companies are impacted by the pandemic um, in their daily life, in their provision, professional lives, in the way we make business, in the way we interact with other people, in the way we hold conferences. Um, and we wanted to look into what are the role of space technologies in all this. What does it mean for our stakeholder, for their daily routine, for their daily business? And um, also to, to look in what does it mean for the general network strategy? Um, we set up a set of questions with, with different stakeholders. Don't get scared when you see the online questionnaire. It's, it's a long list, but if you see the list of members and the different stakeholders in the Rios regions, um, we cover a very broad spectrum of player. So you can choose, you don't have to answer all the questions. You can choose a set of questions that fits with your organization, with what you are doing, where you feel uh, you can say something. Um, we will analyze the outcome of this consultation and the objective is 
um, to have a base for the positioning of the network, um, to uh, develop a position paper and key findings for the political dialogue with the European Commission and the European Space Agency. I think if you see um, the, the recovery plan, the, the large also national efforts, we need to position regions and we need also to see how can this process be used to modernize also regions to uh, uh, create and to strengthen the stru structures for regional um, stakeholder. Uh, we um, on purpose uh, uh, wanted to uh, uh, have good time to give you good time. You have six weeks time uh, from the moment we launched the consultation. And um, we really kindly ask you to promote the initiative in your regional networks, maybe also team up with colleagues to respond jointly. Um, one word to our flagship initiative, Copernicus for Regions. Um, despite the pandemic, we moved on uh, with uh, Copernicus for Region. It did not so much impact us to, to continue realizing the tools. And we like to draw your attention to it. It's not only the brochure. We moved on in the meantime. We developed a set of videos and we subtitled them also. So you will find um, on the website of the, the project a lot of native language material. We translated um, many of the stories in different um, native languages uh, of the authors. Uh, we set up uh, a search engine where you can search targeted for user stories depending on user maturity, depending on application domain, depending on language, depending on uh, uh, Sentinel uh, 1, 2, 3. Um, that helps you uh, uh, to really get a better targeted access to the stories. Um, we will continue and uh, we are currently discussing with ESA how to proceed and our idea is in the next six to nine months to organize a series of Copernicus for Regions webinars to bring new user stories to the floor to debate them with politicians and also to go back to the collection and to look um, what kind of evolution did the user stories make? Did they make it at the market? Um, how, it, how, how much and to which extent did they really go inside the routine of um, public authorities? Um, did the public authorities widen the use? Um, did other departments of the administration took up the service? We will all look into that and um, try to to get an update on the stories that just in a nutshell the the most important from the real side um i like to give now the floor to my colleague margarita krisaki to speak about the outreach and promotion activities thank you okay thank you roya uh, i can share maybe the website um give me one moment Perfect. Can everybody see our website? Roya, can you see it? Yes, yes. yes okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. So I can start. Um, my name is Margarita and I'm pleased to show you our updated user-friendly website and actually explain you where and how you can present uh, your organization and uh, activities. So starting from our home page, we have um, uh, five sections, who we are, what we do, the event section, projects and publications. The section that is of utmost importance for you, uh, where you can present your organization and actually show to the audience um, why you're a key player in, in, in the space sector, in the use of space and applications, is the sex, it's the section who we are. Uh, and um, in particular, the subsection, our members. Uh, there you will see that we have the full members, uh, who, which are our regions and then our associate members. Uh, if you click on the associate members, you will see 
a list with all the organizations that are members of Nereus. Uh, you see the logo uh, and the link to the website. Uh, now, I would like to take the chance, uh, this opportunity to tell you that based on some statistics, we found that the second semester of 2020, we had 15,000 unique visitors that navigated in our website and in particularly in this, um, in this web page. Uh, therefore, you can imagine why it's important to inform us if there are changes in the logo on your logo or on the link uh, of uh, to to the web that links to to the website of your organization. Uh, so feel free to send me a message if any of this information uh, has been changed. In addition, we have developed another section members interviews uh, it's a new section um, and the idea is that we we start interviewing our members and there they have the opportunity to showcase uh, their organization and their activities uh, that is also ongoing so you will be contacted uh, in uh, at a later stage uh, coming back to our homepage. Uh, two very two other very important sections are this is a section of events um, where you have the possibility to promote any workshop you organize or event or webinar and uh, of course for this you can share any information uh, with me and I will uh, promote in, in this web in this web uh, section at the same time of course you can also inform about other events of your interest and uh, register to those uh, coming back to the home page, uh, the next section of great importance is the projects. This is a newcomer to, of, our, of the website. There you can explore and read the updates uh, on those project activities. Uh, we are, part, we are um, uh, partners in flagship, uh, flagship projects like Copernicus for Each and Space for Our Planet. You can click and read more information. Uh, you can read also more info about our consortium projects, EO4G and Impressive. We will talk about them later. And then this is the section actually that it's um, it's a main of your mainly of your interest. Um, it's a showcase uh, for activities pro or projects uh, of Nereus members. So there you can promote uh, your space activities and raise the visibility of your work. Uh, you are very welcome to provide me with information in English and then we can discuss it how we can uh, how you wish to present it in that page. Last but not least, um, ah, sorry, uh, before I come to the last point, uh, another new tool of the website, it's the search tool, this one. And so here you type any word uh, and immediately um, uh, the website show list and then you can click on the uh, on information you are you are looking uh, you are more interested about it so this is very useful in in case you want to search something that it's long it's published a long time ago last but not least we have uh, your news uh, regarding your organization activities and updates are promoted also throughout our uh, uh, twitter account and our social media accounts, but also through our newsletter and news flashes. If you have not registered uh, in our newsletter, you can do it. Uh, you can so. Uh, and there, I also take this opportunity to inform you that uh, our database is consisted of more than five thousand contacts. All of these contacts are are targeted contacts, are space experts at an EU and in a level. Be sure that uh, your work, your work, um, is well promoted, um, and uh, of course, it's uh, it's very it's very important that you constantly inform us about things that you want to promote it, uh, because that would be. Um, uh, disseminated through our website, uh, through our newsletter, uh, to a social account, uh, and, and um, mainly this uh, many other ways. Um, that's from my side, and um, I'm very happy to listen to your questions in case you have. Thank you. Oh, yes, maybe we open uh, the first round of questions. If you have any, please indicate us in the chat. No? Okay, then we can move on. 
to the next uh, uh, se session, um, interregional collaboration and partnerships. Um, maybe just brief as an introduction. Um, Nereus is a platform to, or offers its members a platform to mobilize EU and ESA funded initiative and interregional initiatives. We are um, at your disposal to support members in the whole project circle from building consortium, getting information. So there the secretariat is always your reference point. For the network as such, we have the, the platform position Nereos as such um, is not supposed to, to engage in projects or get contracts. However, in uh, exceptional cases with a strategic interest for the network, um, where the project can serve as a model to our regions and stakeholder, Nereus is encouraged to engage and we will engage uh, always in a small number to have a horizontal uh, function to bring in the regional dimension. And we will explain you a bit in, uh, of the two projects we are involved in. I see one question or comment from Stefan Urevic. It would be a good idea to make links from the members page to the websites of the members. I give that to Margarita. Yes. Um, hello, Stefan. Uh, so, as I presented uh, before, the idea is indeed to provide uh, in this uh, web page dedicated to members uh, information regarding their website and, of course, um, a visual element to recognize what is the what is the organization. Uh, in your case, uh, let me see. Um, we should we should have the the link uh, to your organization, but if not, uh, then uh, uh, we, you can send it to us if this has been changed. Yes, uh, we, uh, we can we can uh, we can introduce it. We can introduce okay. the link. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. It's just may, so may, may I do a comment here. Um, there are some cases that exactly this is what I underlined before that you need to inform us the link has been changed or um, it's not working anymore because this has been the cases. But uh, therefore, we are here. I'm the responsible for the website. So you can send me an email at any time and I can immediately uh, insert any information you wish. Okay, maybe you bilaterally check what's what's with this website or or where where are there uh, um, the problems. Then we move on with projects. Mireos being a platform to mobilize projects, we are nevertheless engaged ourselves in two at the moment. The impressive project, a Horizon 2020 funded project, in the frame of which the consortium develops um, a service for. Uh, to better monitor pollution, maritime pollution events. Um, we invited uh, uh, Daniela Isilo to give us um, more uh, feedback on, on this matter. Please, Daniela, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Roya, for inviting me. Um, I, can I show some slides to just to better explain which is impressive. Sure. Uh, Margarita, you need yeah. You can see the screen? Yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, uh, impressive uh, is uh, an H2 2020 uh, research project uh, to support uh, Portal authority in uh, monitoring uh, the uh, pollution of the sea uh, around the port uh, area. Uh, in this moment, um, we, we, we developed a platform to provide this kind of information. And in this moment, in the platform, there are two lines of services, one dedicated for, to oil spill monitoring and the second dedicated to uh, waste uh, water. 
uh, the target user for this kind of services are port authorities, port operators, shipping companies, but also local and regional public administration, coastal guard, environmental protection agency, uh, oil and gas industries, and offshore industries. Uh, in, the, in the platform, in the moment, uh, there are three ports, Taranto, Rafina, and uh, La Luz. And uh, uh, we uh, implemented uh, uh, these uh, two lines of services, the one for uh, oil pollution and the second with, for wastewater, uh, with uh, a different uh, level of the services according to the, the user uh, requirement uh, and uh, in this moment for example uh, the user can uh, decide to uh, select for a service uh, based only on uh, satellite data monitoring and uh, this is the first level uh, of services very very simple uh, there is a second level uh, where the user can select to have not only a, a monitoring by satellite data, but also to, uh, to have a forecast provided by uh, a physical uh, modeling. A third level of, of these services include also the monitoring uh, with some uh, autonomous uh, vehicles that can be uh, some uh, drone uh, equipped with uh, an epispectral camera to uh, monitor uh, the area and confirm that there is a real uh, oil spill event or a pollution, a wastewater pollution. Uh, but in some cases, uh, there are also some uh, autonomous uh, ships uh, that can uh, monitor um, the portal uh, sea area and take some uh, uh, samples of the, the water to identify the type of, of uh, pollution. And all these results can uh, be uh, visualized by the user uh, in the platform. Which are the benefits for the user? First, to have uh, an integrated uh, solution. Uh, this solution uh, is uh, very simple to, to access and uh, does not require a, a, a knowledge in uh, earth observation data processing. Uh, the, the solution uh, has been developed by, the, uh, by some research uh, um, uni research people working in some university in Greece and in Spain, and uh, it's a very um, a solid solution from a scientific point of view. And uh, um, there are the possibility to decide to have a simple services by satellite and uh, modeling, but also to include some monitoring with other vehicles. Very quickly, I, I can show uh, some uh, some. Some example, uh, the, the, this is the oil spill uh, service. You can see uh, two different uh, polygons uh, in, uh, in the area because the first, uh, the, the light gray is the polygon identified by satellite, uh, where uh, the, other, uh, the other polygon with uh, a different scale color as shown in the legend is uh, the polygon identified by the, the modeling that uh, can be activated uh, some minutes after the receiving of the polygon and show for uh, 20 hours, uh, for the next 20 hours, for uh, each, uh, uh, for every three hours, the, um, how the, poly the, the, po the potential of spill can move uh, in, uh, in the sea. An analogous for the wastewater, uh, in this case, uh, uh, we have a daily monitoring uh, uh, for turbidity, chlorophyll, uh, suspended matter. Uh, but uh, in the day where the sentinel is not present or uh, it's too, uh, too, the hour is too cloudy, it's possible to have the same data uh, provided by uh, modeling. Uh, this is my, my last slide, of course, uh, open for any kind of question. Thank you, Daniela, for this vivid presentation. Um, 
we we will open the 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 question session after the second maritime intervention then you can maybe both uh, respond from uh, Nereo's side we like to mention that Nereos will organize the final event for the impressive uh, initiative and we will be very glad to welcome members who, who share their experiences on the platform who um, give feedback if this platform is useful and how far uh, uh, they could uh, deal with it. Okay, I like to give the floor now to our invited speaker from the European Space Agency, um, Isabelle Duvaux-Béchamp. Please, the floor is yours. Ah, we can't hear you, one second. No, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can okay. hear you. Okay, so good afternoon uh, to all. I know some of you, but not uh, not all. And I will share my presentation if it works. Yeah, it seems to work. Can you see it? Yes. No. Into the slideshow mode. So just a short, short introduction and some might, uh, some know already in uh, uh, the ones who are here. So I will just, it's always display settings. Just one minute to, yes, should be okay now. So just to present shortly, uh, a survey that we have started for the, uh, for our activities at, at ESA. For those who would not know ESA, uh, it's just trying to go to the second slide. I had a crush of my computer just when the meeting started, so I had to restart it. It still is blocked. Okay, so ESA, I will go on. It will it will uh, change one at one point in time. So we are an intergovernmental organization. So, so for those who do not know, uh, with 22 member states, you have the flag at the bottom, the 22 member states plus two associate and one cooperating state, uh, working in all areas of space. Uh, of space, uh, and um, and with a budget of something like 6.5 uh, billion euro for 2021, 20, uh, coming for three quarters from the member states and more or less 20-25% uh, from the uh, European Union uh, for Copernicus and Galileo and some uh, and some third parties. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, this is fine. Uh, so we have started what's called the Blue World Task Force. So the idea is that we want more and more to work uh, bottom up for the future programs. So to define the future program or to have a strong impact of the needs of the users and not only on what would be uh, technologically feasible. So to start from the needs of the users and for that, we start from uh, what is uh, requested by the member states uh, and there was some requests done in the frame of our regional approach. I will show what we have for today uh, to start discussion on what we call the blue world. Um, and this, uh, the fact that uh, maritime activity are supported by space and satellite is not new. Huh? It's not was not just discovered two years ago, but the fact that some member state wanted us to specifically work on the challenges of this uh, of this uh, area. Uh, started in 2018 with a request from uh, Portugal, uh, 2019 with a request from Greece, and end of 2019, uh, we started the Blue World Task Force. Uh, it, uh, just before we had a mapping exercise done on all ESA programs existing and planned, we already know what we were talking. And in this task force, we have uh, 19 member states and one associate represented, and some of the members are in the room today. So, of course, they know what I'm mentioning. And uh, the, the point is to discuss what are the needs, what are the challenges, what is proposed today, and to do a gap analysis uh, in order to be able to address other topics. This we've done three years ago for the Arctic, in terms of the Arctic, and uh, one of the projects that was that were proposed in 2019 was directly coming from the Arctic work. That was the Arctic weather satellite demonstrator. Uh, so we are planning to have uh, this type of things also well to propose the programs or parts of programs from that. 
And uh, what I will mention here today is the survey that was suggested by the member state and that we have started uh, three weeks ago. The regional approach, uh, it started in fact with the Arctic uh, in 2012 internally and 2016 with the member states. Uh, Africa is starting, Alps is starting, Antarctic also was done some years ago. And the Blue Wars, as mentioned, started with the Atlantic, Atlantic and Mediterranean. Atlantic because the interests of Portugal, especially, and the Azores, uh, Mediterranean for Greece. And then the other member states joining ask us also to take into account the Black Sea Danube, the Baltic, the North Sea, and the Arctic Ocean, at least into the consideration. Uh, the survey itself, the, this famous bottom-up approach is to get the views of the maritime users uh, and to, to try to find out if there are some common grounds, common challenges that are not yet supported and that maybe future programs could support. This was disseminated in particular by the members of the task force who did disseminated it to their network. Uh, we added our own uh, networks and uh, we would be very happy if uh, Nereus also would uh, be able to disseminate that to have as many uh, answers as possible in order to have a better chance to get meaningful results. Uh, there are 28 questions, but some are just multiple choice, uh, whether you tick, uh, whether you are in which area you are, uh, the user is working also, and some open question to get a bit more. Uh, four main parts. One is some details uh, on the respondees, so whether it is uh, an SME, a national authority, or so on. What are the maritime priorities and drivers? So not considering whether space can help or not, just the maritime priorities. Then some elements on whether the respondee knows about space, uses about space or, or what, he, what he has. And also if they would be interested in discussion further on after. So be contacted, participate in a workshop area also. Um, we have today more than 120 uh, questionnaires that were filled and completed. So it's already quite, uh, quite fine from at least 10 member states. We have more than 350 that are in the pipeline. Of course, they will not all be completed and that's, uh, that is clear. The deadline today is end of February. We'll see if we have enough by this uh, so end of the week. Uh, it's always possible to extend if you feel an interest that it should be extended by some point. And uh, the analysis will be, of course, uh, presented to the Google Task Force or to the member states in the task force and, uh, and to council if there is an interest in order to, to support the way forward. So, of course, I'm ready to answer to any question, but it is uh, if you see if you see an interest there to either answer yourself or those who would be in this category would have a, uh, would have um, networks in this category, uh, or if you have some some good ideas of via the network itself. So that's all for my presentation. Okay, many thanks, Isabel. So then we open the round of questions for um, the two maritime intervention. I see um, one question from uh, Paul Mayer Britannia. Is there a link here with the clean set program from EMSA, at least for oil spilling detection? That is a question to Daniela. This is a very good question. The idea of our project is to be complementary respect to uh, CleanSynet program uh, because uh, CleanSynet uh, is an, a European program and is of course very good for uh, big events but sometimes uh, uh, there are very small events close to the coast so uh, in this project uh, we uh, developed an, an hydrodynamic uh, model at uh, port scale and uh, with this model it's possible to identify also very small uh, polygon of potential spill and uh, to understand uh, where they uh, they uh, move in the next uh, days mm -hmm. thank you um the colleagues from paul britannia philip and caro do you like to add something uh, hi, uh, hi, everybody. No, 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 that's, that's, uh, that's a good question. I wanted to know really if, yeah, if it's okay. complementary and it looks like. So. Perfect. Then we have a question from Vincent Tomasu-Kness to Isabel. 
How has the Commission been involved in the survey, for instance, DG Mara or DG Defis, um, like in the context of Copernicus, in particular Copernicus Mar Marine Service stakeholders and users? So the Commission as such was not involved in uh, defining the survey. This was done uh, with the member states uh, in the frame of the ISA task force. Uh, of course, there are experts of ISA directories that are in the task force also, including the one that develop the services for Copernicus Marine. Because, you know, in general, a lot of the services or a certain number are developed by ISA and then transferred to uh, Copernicus for, for implementation. So in the, in the survey we have done internally at ISA uh, in 2019, we considered all that we know that was already available, of course. Uh, the idea of the survey is not to define new services, is to get an understanding of what are the needs of the of the community. Uh, some are already using, some are not. Uh, and to have this understanding and then to confront this understanding to what exists. So it's not to duplicate what would exist somewhere else, because nobody wants to duplicate. Uh, it's it's to have this understanding of the of the needs. So it's the first element of, uh, of answer. And Vincent, you can discuss with uh, Eric and Ariel if you wish to get more on what uh, the class involvement into the into the Blue Cross Task Force. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more question to the maritime interventions? More question to the maritime interventions. Okay, then we can move on to education and training. Um, Margarita Krisaki, the floor is yours. Maybe you say something to, Eras to the Erasmus Plus funded initiative, but also to the role education and training plays on the Nereus platform. Yes, of course. Thank you, Roya. Um, so, as uh, we mentioned in the beginning, you produce an Erasmus sector project for education and capacity skills building and it aims uh, to the current upcoming challenges to the earth observation geoinformation sectors. Uh, we are in consortium of 26 partners from universities, companies and uh, other entities who apply innovative solution for education and training um, activities. So in this framework, uh, Nereus brings the benefits of the project at the regional level uh, by organizing uh, five outreach workshops. Two of them had been already organized in uh, Brussels and in Nouvelle Aquitaine, our member region. And we are going to organize our next uh, workshop in the in the Azores. Um, in these workshops, we promote the space capabilities of our regional stakeholders, and we also bring the benefits, the novelties of the EO4GO tools and training material produced in this um, in the area of education and training. Um, for this reason, uh, allow me also, Roya, I can share uh, the web page on our website where you can uh, find uh, our activities um, regarding geo. I think Isabel, is, you have to get it. Do you? Can you get it yourself? Yes, 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 to? yes. I can share it. I can share. Okay. It. I don't have a, okay. I don't have okay. a problem. So, this is our own in, out of our own initiative. We built this uh, page dedicated with Geo, where you read the updates of the project and also uh, uh, the activities concerning Nereus action in this project. And I would invite you right away actually to register in the virtual workshop we organized uh, together with the um, uh, with the uh, University of the Azores on the 2nd of July uh, regarding skills and development in the, in the Azorean ecosystem. So registration and open is open, you can already register. However, apart from this, uh, we also promote the tools produced by uh, our partners uh, within Neo4Geo. And when we say tools, uh, we are talking about um, 
uh, tools that allows you to create job profiles, to create job offers, and uh, curriculum, the, the cu curriculum design tools that you cre can create edu education offers, like a master program, lectures, and so on. That's very interesting for the universities of our network. Uh, all the information is there on the webpage and, of course, in the website of EO4GEO. In the coming weeks, we would invite you to provide um, uh, your feedback regarding a series of activities within EO4GEO. One of them has al already been communicated with you, and it's the mobility program, uh, which is launched by, by the project, where you have the chance to host a traineeship or project to work, uh, and therefore boost your project of your organization in a cost-effective way. Uh, that's from my side, and more information will come soon uh, through our news flashes. Roya, you can continue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, i like now to give the floor to Emmanuel Zinou, who is going to present us the university initiative, um, a parallel initiative in the sector of education and training. Please, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, uh, you have to unmute Can't yourself. Hear you. Can't hear you. Okay, good morning now everybody. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, so sorry, I don't touch the camera because I have a very bad uh, link now. But uh, uh, So thank you uh, for uh, Roya for letting me presenting uh, university. Uh, so uh, my objective here is just to introduce the concept of uh, the European University called University. Um, it's a European, so-called European University based, focused on the space sector and uh, uh, taking into account social, societal and environmental uh, challenges. The idea is to build a comprehensive university on the space sector and it's called University, European Space University for Earth and Humanity. Uh, actually, the university is today an alliance of five uh, European universities, the University of Toulouse, uh, the University of Luxembourg, the U University of Düsseldorf, Lulea Technical University in Sweden, and AGH in Poland. Uh, so the, the objective of this uh, project, the European project on the Erasmus Plus frame, is, is to be comprehensive so it means that we are supposed to address six uh, disciplines, science and engineering, of course, but also economy, business and finance, uh, medicine and health, human and social science, uh, art and cultural studies, and innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, in, in parallel, the space sector has been divided into four sections. Uh, the first one is all related to our Earth, social, societal and environmental challenges. The second uh, section is a sustainable sorry, uh, space, so so-called the new space today. Uh, third section is space settlement and resources, and the fourth uh, sector is the space exploration and deep space. Uh, we can have some ideas of uh, on each section what we are talking about. Uh, for Earth is. Uh, agriculture, earth science, climate change, geopolitics, uh, geodata and AI, uh, social geography, and so on. For sustainable space is uh, access to space, space law, also military issues, space debris, uh, constellation, our earth, etc. About space settlement and resources, uh, the idea is to address uh, some some discipline like architecture, robotics, uh, in situ resources utiliz utilization, telemedicine, water management, power management, etc., confinement. And in uh, space exploration and deep space, we are more in science fiction, literature, cultural studies, deep space, probes, etc. So we want to address the space sector not only in science engineering, but also in a really, really comprehensive way uh, in all disciplines. So we have the, 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 
the six academic uh, uh, disciplines. We have the four sections of the space, and one of the objectives of the project is to build a set of courses in all the box of the matrix. So we had uh, the support for this project uh, we won last year uh, of a wide round of partners, and some of you are here today. So from industries, from associations, student agencies, uh, public authorities, labs, academics, and SMEs, etc. Okay, here just a, a snapshot of uh, most of our partners. We have also ESA. So hello to Isabel and to Pierrot. <laughs> Uh, from ESA uh, for supporting us also in this uh, in this project. We also uh, won a few weeks ago uh, another call directly related to the first one and more research oriented, and especially with uh, we want to to to, to draw a, a roadmap for 2035 and a vision for 2050. Uh, we want also to build uh, a, a concept of single labs and uh, for the research community, and also uh, other uh, work packages uh, that are demanding by the European Commission, especially knowledge transfer and innovation strategy, communication, especially outside the lab, and dissemination and collaboration with policymakers uh, and other European universities. So we have a governance both for both projects, academic and research, with an advisory board. And I'm also talking today here for for uh, with uh, with uh, for stakeholders and potential stakeholders to join the project. Uh, so the the idea of the involvement of uh, stakeholders, uh, like you, is. Uh, one of the tasks is to be involved in the work package of the both projects in which you are potentially interested uh, for uh, creating the course, but also innovative uh, pedagogical models. So to create some course that are, let's say, uh, available at distance or in, or in a asynchronous way. Uh, also in entrepreneurship innovation, equity, inclusion, diversity, sustainability, and dissemination. And also for the, the working group, also for the for the research project. And so um, we want to settle uh, an advisory board uh, to coordinate all stakeholders' involvement in the project. And so uh, behind that, an advisory committee that regroups all interest stakeholders uh, from academics, but also from all different kind of, uh, of uh, institutions, uh, SMEs, public agencies, etc. What is the objective uh, of the advisory committee? Uh, is to help the, the university project to, to fulfill the task and objective. So concretely, for instance, to participate to the work packages, but also to develop cooperation interaction among all partners and also to develop a win-win cooperation between stakeholders and the university member. So uh, I'm very happy here to discuss uh, with a, a wide audience, audience of uh, potential stakeholders. And uh, if you want uh, more in, in information and more detailed information, do not hesitate to, to uh, contact us in this uh, project because we are on a three-year project and next uh, four-year project. And uh, we start also to bring the next call uh, in, uh, in two years now that will arrive very soon. Uh, just for your information, we will make a big event uh, in October at Cité de l'Espace in Toulouse. We'll be happy to welcome you and to invite you. Uh, the is to, to redo the kickoff meeting that uh, we have done only online for the academic project and to do the kickoff meeting of the research project this day. So it will be the first day will be very pol uh, political event with all partners and all stakeholders, and the second day will be more uh, working session. So thank you very much for your attention, and if you have some questions, do not hesitate to to contact me. 
Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, Nereos follows the work of the university projects, um, promotes it, and we are also represented in the advisory board. Um, the um, coordinator of uh, the university project, um, also Emmanuel Zinu, are based in our member region Occitania. We also make close links to the region. I now see a question by Ariel Fuchs. Where is this university based? You mean the university university? And maybe Emmanuel, you can uh, explain a bit. Yeah, okay. Did I was muted, a, sorry. A slide on uh, that. <laughs> Uh, so today it's not uh, a university as it is, concretely it's more a consortium of, uh, of uh, the five universities. So there is no, uh, uh, there is not a place, dedicated place. Uh, it will be perhaps a long-term objective to build that, to build uh, uh, to a single place. Uh, but in short term, I would say that um, we want to share also at distance a lot of uh, courses and disciplines. So the objective is not to regroup <laughs> in a single place, but uh, we have developed the concept of a single class and a single facilities, uh, but at distance, uh, single class, meaning that uh, we want uh, all the students from Poland, from Sudan, from France, uh, from Germany, uh, from Luxembourg, to be in their home university, but also to be in the same class. Uh, and same for the facilities for the next research project. We want to develop a single lab uh, concept, maybe to build a lab without wall, uh, and to to share this to share uh, the facilities in, in our home institution. So there is not yet uh, a, a place or. A, a specific place to settle this university. Uh, today it's more a consortium and a virtual place. Thank you. Any more question to the intervention on education and training? No? Okay, then we can move on to the next se section. Um, we had skipped the introduction round in the beginning, and I think I would like now to combine it, that we make a, a short introduction round through the registered participants, that you introduce yourself, say something about your organization, and then um, give us feedback on this kind of new meetings. If you find this helpful, interesting, and what would be your interest, um, give us also some food for thought, uh, what would be your interest uh, in, what topics are of interest for you, and also um, uh, like new ways of networking. Um, maybe I go the list of registered participants. I, then please, I pass, um, take the floor. We have here two registered participants, Jacobo Celentano and Rosario Pavone. Are you still with us? I'd like to take the floor. No, okay. Then the next, uh, Kerima, Geraldine Boer. Hello? Geraldine Boer? Yes. Hello? Can yeah, we me? can hear you. Okay. Um, I thought that my director, uh, Quentin Gauthier, I uh, would like to speak for the for institution. I don't know if uh, he's listening. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, so the Cerema, uh, um, I will uh, explain uh, quickly. It's a French uh, center for studies on uh, environment, uh, urban planning, risk management and mobility. And so we work as uh, Copernicus uh, Relays uh, to promote uh, the use of um, satellite applications 
to answer um, public policies for French Ministry of uh, Environment. Uh, so we have um, we have made some actions. We launched a survey on the use of uh, Copernicus data and services um, that was uh, launched with the. Ah, we can hear you very badly. Darkness in France. Ah, okay. Is it better now? Yes, yes. Yes, yes now it's okay. Now it's okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I said that we launched a survey last year with the help of uh, CNES on the use of uh, Copernicus data and services. And so we have uh, written a, um, a report with the results of this survey. And we are going to communicate on these uh, results uh, uh, in, um, in the next months uh, with uh, uh, communication uh, within the um, uh, with the Copernicus relays. Uh, and uh, so uh, we are the, the member of our team uh, who worked uh, on Copernicus was uh, Christelle Bosk and she uh, left the team uh, last year. So it's uh, a little bit new for us <laughs> to participate to, uh, to NERUS. Uh, so uh, uh, we are wait we we are waiting to have uh, more links with Nerus um, next year, um, and uh, more links with all the members, uh, all the associate members. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, then I like to give um, on the floor to Vincent Tomazu from CNES. In a nutshell, on your organization, and then your view on uh, this kind of meetings and what your interest would be. Thank you, Oria. So, yes, the CNES is a national French uh, space agency. So, as such, we uh, we develop uh, satellite and, and systems, but also we are uh, following and, and uh, contributing to, and supporting, I would say. Uh, stakeholders in the dance films uh, sector. So, as such, uh, Nereuts is a, is a kind of a flagship uh, uh, to to okay to bridge with the regions and uh, with the real users, uh, users as a uh, as a developer of services, but also uh, final users like uh, local authorities or, or things like that. So, from our point of view, uh, as such, the, the French uh, space agency has nothing to, to sell and to commercialize, but we are here more to, to better understand uh, the reality of, of uh, space activities and, and downstream services, and uh, of course, to support uh, the development of these activities. Mm -hmm. And, do you and have regarding this kind of, of course, this kind of uh, of uh, of meetings are really interesting for us, uh, just to to listen to uh, other regions and to um, better understand their requirements, their needs, uh, their views on the on the space uh, downstream activities, and, uh, and probably also their requirements in terms of uh, of observation systems. Thank you. Um, I saw there were several colleagues from CNES registered. Does another colleague want to compliment? Jean-Claude, Ariel, Eric? Uh, for, for me, I have nothing more to, to, to say because uh, Vincent uh, uh, resumed and, and say that, that the more important thing we are we are here in order to to help the community and to to, to share to share uh, what what we do and what we can do in order to uh, could convince uh, for instance authorities to to use to use the applications coming from uh, from space. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, 
Then I move on to the Cyprus University of Technology and um, Diophantos Hatjimitis. Are you still with us? Um, I don't see you. No? Okay, then the next. Um, uh, Thomas Geist. Thomas Geist. Yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, now the mic is open. <laughs> so, yeah, um, my name is Thomas Geist. I am representing FFG, which is the Austrian Research Promotion Agency, and we are, well, the biggest funding agency in Austria, national level for R&D and I. Because it's the function of a national space agency in Austria, meaning that we are representing Austria in, in all the uh, boards at, at the European Space Agency, for example, or at the European Union in the Space Program, for example. And uh, we are member in the Rios or associate member in the Rios already since the beginning, since 2007. And here our main intention is to build a link between the Rios network and, and Austria, Austrian institutions. Because you know that there is no Norwegian uh, is a full member in, in uh, in the Rios to date. So what we also are in, what, what, what are we interested? Um, in the moment, we, well, we, we run a national program for space applications. And in the moment, we are really uh, going to, to, to try to involve uh, public stakeholders in Austria more to Copernicus and to find really solution based on Copernicus, not only at the national level, but also on the, on the regional level. And I think here we have a, a very clear uh, interface to to Copernic uh, to to Nerios, and hopefully we will also find some some synergies here. And I think it's a very good idea to have this this meeting in this uh, setting today. And I think it's that that's maybe one one advantage uh, out of the situation we, we face now that um, everyone is now uh, um, used to use video conferences and. I think it's you. You would never succeed to to bring twenty associate members to Brussels for one and a half hours. <laughs> I think that, that's a good advantage, and I think you should use this, of course, more often. For example, the event you mentioned, I think, on the summer in March. You know, this 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 morning event for two hours. I think that, that's very good also to join for many many of us um, remotely and. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to more um, offers like this. Maybe not too often, but yeah, but in a reasonable interval, I would say. That's from my side. Thanks a lot, Roya. Thank you, Thank you Thomas. Um, listening to uh, your efforts to involve public stakeholder in Copernicus, we know through our flagship initiative that's not easy, and to uh, we are at the forefront uh, every day. It, it's it's a it's a challenge. But what could be maybe helpful for you? We have user stories in German. You find them through the search engine, and maybe uh, it's interesting and. I think we also have some from Austria. I, I would have need to double check, but that could be a nice inspiration for your public uh, authorities. Well, it is, and I can confirm that there are also some, not 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 many, but stories from Austria are also included here. <laughs> okay, thank you, Thomas, for joining. Thanks. Then I move on to our new associate partner. Um, I give the floor to Stephanie Stefania Di Zorzi, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, pleased to meet you, pleased to participate to the first uh, Nereus meeting from, from us. Uh, NEREOS is a European Institute for Technological Development. Uh, we joined NEREOS because of it, that uh, uh, the, the international support for uh, our goal is absolutely important. We work to the different uh, level with the local institution down from the regional level, but also down to the local level with the municipality. And we work also with the startup and uh, SMEs uh, on the territory. Um, the idea is to use uh, this information, uh, means uh, Copernicus and satellite data, to make the space feel more close to the people, to make them understand what this could be the real, the real value. 
Um, we have also some activity with the kids, with the young, young generation. Uh, we have uh, had some meeting for the Mars uh, um, landing last week with the two classes uh, here in Venice and the guys were uh, absolutely amazing to understand what's going on uh, uh, so far from their, their classes. Um, yes, is also involved in some European project uh, from big data to the use of uh, Copernicus satellite data. And I am in the field of uh, use from the 1995. And what we have organized some marketons, we have organized some uh, um, public activity. Of course, now it is absolutely impossible to do anything like that. So uh, that is a pity somehow. We are based in two sites for now. One is in Treviso and the second one is in Venice. Um, and I believe that, well, oh, sorry, another thing, we work we use satellite data in several fields because the research institute is involved in uh, um, social uh, science and economy. Uh, space information like the tools on several uh, uh, on several uh, the university hosting, um, uh, say, researcher and, uh, and uh, PhD students uh, for them for to develop the fields of they working in, uh, in with, the, uh, with the use of, the, of space uh, information. And Roya, I believe that I, I give you back the floor. Roya, Thank you, Stefania. Warm welcome. We look forward to cooperating with you. Now I give the floor to uh, Cienner Irea, Massimo Antonetti. Are you still with us? Yes. Massimo, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, can you can you listen me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. We hear you well. So because my my uh, web link is uh, very poor today. Uh, so uh, my institute is uh, one of the about 100 institutes of the National Research Council of Italy. is a governative agency devoted to research in all the fields of the research. Our, uh, our mission is the development and methodology of methodologies and technologies for acquisition, processing, fusion, and of images and data obtained by electromagnetic sensors. So not only on mounted on satellite, but also on aircraft and in situ. Uh, we are also uh, involved in uh, biomedical uh, application of electro electromagnetic fields. Our institute has uh, three um, uh, main uh, uh, operating uh, section in uh, Naples, uh, where there are the direction of the Institute in Bari and in Milano. That's all uh, for me. <laughs> if, uh, if you need more information, please Thank ask. You. Thank you. Mark. We keep in touch and I think there will be another occasion to go more in depth. Do we have Branka Kuka from the Politecnico di Milano still with us? The floor is yours, but I can't see you. Uh, no, uh, may I interrupt, Roya? No, Branka left the discussion. Okay. However, she mentioned to me in the email that she appreciated very much this kind of meeting. She thanked us for the communications and the website. Um, and she would be interested to explore together with an, an Areus uh, the link uh, for Earth Observation Technologies and Sustainable Development Goals uh, in view of the new space policy. That's that's mm -hmm. a comment. Her. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Then I'd like to give the floor to Paolo Tortora from the University of Bologna. Hello, Roya. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so good morning. We hear you well. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, good morning. Thanks a lot for uh, the opportunity to introduce ourselves. Uh, we are not with an so since many years, but uh, we've been active members uh, from the University of Bologna, I think, uh, since uh, a couple of years, maybe two or three years. Uh, I'm the delegate from my university in uh, Nereus. Just a very brief introduction of what we do. Uh, we are the second largest university in Italy, so we are a multidisciplinary uh, university. So we cover uh, several areas from the space technology, uh, space applications, uh, earth observations, uh, and uh, space physics. So, in particular, within Reus, I think the main interest from most of my colleagues is in the area of earth observation and applications, so downstream applications. Um, you may know that there was also at a certain time a GNSS working group, which was also co chaired by one of my colleagues, Stefano Gandolfi. So, we have uh, lots of interest, and uh, we really welcome the opportunity of doing. Uh, these uh, uh, short meetings uh, online uh, to, uh, of course, network with the other members and have uh, more opportunity for collaboration. So uh, that's all I wanted to say for today. Mm -hmm. and, Thank uh, you. Thanks again. Thank you. Then before our last maritime partner leaves, Phil Mombe from, from Brittany, Paul Mayer, are you still with us? The floor is yours. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I am. Uh, hi, Maria. Hi again. So, a uh, few words about my entity, which is a sea innovation cluster gathering a membership of 400. Um, of course, not all these maritime stakeholders are interested in uh, satellite or, or space data, but uh, most of them uh, are or will be in a, in a close future, I believe. Uh, so, um, we have a Actually, a specific entity inside our cluster that deals with the uh, uh, promotion of uh, satellite uh, data and satellite technology for uh, applicative uh, solution for, for the maritime uh, world. So, um, for this meeting, I, I guess I, I expect to try to share some uh, good information and uh, try uh, to uh, intimately probably build some uh, or apply to European project together. I see mm -hmm. that uh, I've got some uh, friends that I know already, Rory, Pierrot, uh, all the guys from CNES and stuff. So most of us, we know each other, but uh, we can build more, as you say, um, Roya, more collaboration in between regions. I think mm -hmm. it would be a, a good thing. So um, I would be... Uh, quite happy to try to facilitate that. Okay. Maybe that we think also of a good topic, of a good approach to better link the associate partners to regions and maybe also to see in which regions particularly are you interested and how can we make the regional stakeholder more visible for you? Yes, I, I, I guess there's, there are different regulations, different directives and and some sort of related funding opportunities to that. And so I hope this meeting, and uh, I know Nereus is working hard on this, uh, Nereus can also uh, some sort of coordinate or put together some uh, regional uh, or some, some associate member from different region together in this proposal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got the message that Quentin Gauthier from Kirima would like to would like to uh, compliment uh, uh, something on his organizations. Please, Monsieur Gauthier, the floor is yours. Yeah, hello. I, I just wanted to apologize first for not having answered uh, before. I, I was on the phone. I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah, uh, thank you, Geraldine. And I just wanted to add that. Um, in at Serra, we are um, we are operating um, a French platform that is called uh, Applisat. I, I made the uh, I put, just put the link in chat Applisat.fr, and it's basically uh, something which is a bit like Nereus on the on the French scale. The the idea is to uh, uh, promote the use of um, of space data uh, for uh, local communities and uh, and French state services at the local scale. 
and uh, so it, it gathers some 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 good practices, some uh, um, some documentation about how to access uh, the data, how to use it, and so on. And it, it's been uh, launched about a year ago, and it's uh, it will be uh, further developed. And um, and the idea is really to connect uh, users with uh, um, potential users that uh, like people that are not uh, space experts. Uh, with the different applications that can be made from these uh, these data, so we are also interested about uh, all what uh, Neros can bring uh, in terms of uh, examples that are being developed elsewhere in Europe, which can bring good ideas to uh, French uh, communities. And uh, it's also, of course, uh, I mean, our world is also to promote what can be done here. So we know that Neros can be a, a good um, a good way to. Uh, um, offer a larger diffusion to what can be done by French uh, French stakeholders. So, I mean, we are also interested in all the all these media that you are using to um, to connect people, to to organize your your events, your actions, and so on, because it brings us ideas to what we that what can be can be done at the more local scale in France. So, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Many thanks, many thanks. Um. We have one representative from a region, Giovanna Chiadella from Apulia region. Um, Giovanna, maybe you can say briefly something about your region and if you found the education training part interesting and what, what are your interests in the education training topic? Yes, many thanks, Roya. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Giovanna Cialdella and I work for Apulia region, Brussels office. And um, as a Puglia region, we are very interested in uh, in training and education. As uh, we have uh, in Grottaglie, uh, there is a, a space port, and um, we are developing uh, the training for a remote drones pilot. Uh, so, as this regard, we are very interested in this kind of training activity and also in this kind of meeting uh, because we would like to. Um, share our interest uh, with other regions and so for us this kind of initiative are very fruitful and so many thanks Raya for that. Okay, <laughs> many thanks. I see that Diofantos from the University in Cyprus joined again. Uh, Diofantos, do you like to take the floor? No, Diofantos? No, he can't hear us. Okay, um, we're coming now to the end. Um, we have also some guests who joined us um, because they were interested in uh, some topics. Um, we have Gwenelle Dubois from the Atlantic Cities Network. Well, maybe you can take the floor and say briefly something about your network. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first, thank you for the invitation to your meeting. It was very interesting to see all the presentations, especially those on maritime topics, because it's a topic which interests our, our network a lot because we have coastal cities. So uh, I'm a network officer for Atlantic Cities, and Atlantic Cities is a membership organization which gathers 18 cities from France, Spain, Portugal, and Ireland along the Atlantic coast. Um, who works for the promotion of Atlantic cities. Uh, basically, what we do is that we engage our cities around sharing good practices about topics such as the environment, uh, blue growth, innovation, and social dimension. Uh, we also advocate for cities in front of the European Union, and we also participate, participate sorry, in European funded projects uh, with Interreg Europe and Interreg Atlantic area. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was a very good start and we look very much forward to cover, collaborate with your organization and partnering. I'm quite glad we were met in touch. Um, we have some other guests and they were particularly interested in the maritime topic and they are part of an ESA Atlantic initiative. Um, Filippo, maybe you can briefly introduce your initiative to our partners. Uh, thank you, uh, Roya. 
and once again thank you for the invitation for being uh, for be, being possible to listen to this meeting uh, uh, I, i'm philip brandão working uh, in the blue economy project which is part of this atlantic regional initiative and uh, where we aim at providing insights and solutions in the blue economy topic using earth observation uh, imagery uh, we are working uh, in three subdomains: innovation clusters and uh, Atlantic Natural Resources Management, and also maritime spatial planning. Uh, uh, for this project, uh, we are counting with uh, uh, Nereus, uh, and we also see here Philippe Mombe from Bolmer uh, as uh, uh, strategic stakeholders uh, that, in the end, uh, will help us on. Uh, the innovation clusters activity where we are focusing on uh, the identification of gaps and the road and the future road mapping for future developments and technological developments uh, all based uh, uh, on earth observation uh, uh, data thank you mm -hmm. thank you are there or any of the other guests who would like to compliment say something about the atlantic initiative No. Um, did I overlook somebody? Somebody wants to take the floor? No? Okay. Then, thank you for having stayed with us these one and a half hours. I hope it was a good kick off. Um, we will uh, share with you the presentations and uh, 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 please feel free if anything comes up and we will think of what could be good topics for a next meeting, maybe around the General Assembly or after. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Joan. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I just well, moved on to the lobby. <laughs> uh, the, the recording, the recording, Roya. Yes. Thank you. That's not recorded. <laughs>